scripture today is Romans 2, verse 12. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. I am glad to be with y'all this morning, but I am sorry that Matt Albritton is um, sick this morning, so y'all will have to put up with me this morning. But I'm delighted to be here. As I know several of y'all, I've served um, back in, um, it was the year of 2006 as a youth minister here to the 2008, so I see a lot of um, familiar faces, but also a lot of new people, and just delighted to be with y'all this morning. In March 2012, I went to India to visit my compassion child. As I walked through the streets of Calcutta, visiting homes and compassion international centers, I saw all these filthy roads with beggars, sick people, people selling vegetables, and different types of foods and souvenirs. Then we went to Mother Teresa's home for the dying and turned down the road to Mother Teresa's orphanage. We walked up the stairs to the room, and the first room were with children with disabilities. As I walked in that room, I felt children tugging on my skirt as they were wanting to be loved on. And several of them just wanted me to pick them up and hug on them. I started feeding one child a snack, and then I heard another little boy crying in the distance, sitting in a wooden chair. I picked him up, and then I noticed he was half my size, and his body went limp. And I just bounced him and loved on him, and I took him to the window to see the beautiful streets of Calcutta. As he looked out in the streets, his tears, his tears subsided, and he began to calm down. Well, then I walked him back and began to put him down in his chair, and he had this beautiful smile on his face. Well, then I decided, let me go outside to the, out with the other children as they're running around and playing. And then I had this n another little girl that came up to me, and she was about yay so high and she again was another little child that reached up and wanted me to pick her up and love on her and as i began to love on her and spent the day with her i began to hear god speak to me and he said is this child wants a relationship with you i want a loving relationship with you I love you as this little child loved you. And then my team had to say their goodbyes, and this child started crying as I left her behind. My heart began to break, and again, God's words echoed in my heart again. I want a loving relationship with you as this little child wants a loving relationship with you. Signs of God's love are all around us. God's creation is an expression of God's overflowing love. The creator is present to us in the wonder and beauty of creation. Psalm 8 says, We are made as free beings to share in God's glory and purpose. In Genesis 3, chapters 3 through 4, says, Yet almost from the beginning, people used free will to ignore God rather than to have a relationship with Him. The Bible is a love story. The story of God's love for humanity despite our sin. It is a love story from the beginning all the way to the end. 
Throughout the Old Testament, we hear God repeatedly inviting us to a covenant relationship, a mutual relationship of love. And Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. God offers us a relationship of grace. God's grace stems from God's unconditional love. God is calling us to come to him just as we are. No matter what we have going on in our lives, he is doing this because he loves us. Even when we feel unacceptable, God accepts us. Even when we fail God, God forgives us and is ready to give us another chance. Even when we see no future for ourselves, God prepares a way, opening the future in ways we cannot imagine. Well, as humans, we have several reasons why we ignore God's love. And one is ignorance. Many people do not know about God's offer of a life-giving relationship. Many people have been taught misleading images of God. And one of them is we just have this desire to be in control. People want to be in control of everything. We want to be in control of our whole life. We want to be in control of our finances. We want to be in control of our job. We want to be in control of the churches we attend. We want to be in control of our hobbies. We want to be in control of our family. We want to be in control of everything we do instead of letting go and letting God have it. I have to admit, I like to be in control. I like to be in control of my job. I like to be in control of my finances. I like to be in control of my family. I like to be in control of a lot of things. I'm a fixer. I want to take things in my hands and do things the way I want to do them instead of letting go and letting God. But I'll tell you, as many of you know, I have served the church for like 13 years and God finally said, all right, Alicia, all right, I'm pushing you out of your comfort zone, go. And I was like, what? Go. And he sent me into a very unfamiliar place, a place I thought I would never serve, and that is in hospital chaplaincy. I sit with families, help guide them in end-of-life decisions. I sit with families in times of need when they're newly diagnosed with something. I sit with families that, are, that have experienced death with a loved one. I sit with families that have experienced trauma in some sort of fashion that have shaken their world to the core and they don't know why and are in total shock. And I sit with families when they just need someone to talk to. Yeah, it's shocking. Yeah, it can be tough. But yet, God reminds me, he is Lord of Lords, and he is putting his, his armor on me, and he is walking with me every step of the way, and he is showing me that there's going to be a blessing out of this. He is showing me that I am going in there to show his love and I am going to show the compassion that he has for his people in the midst of their trauma. Some of the areas that I've experienced I never thought of and that's taking my dogs. When I'm a person that I can't love, my dogs show a non-judgmental presence 
We go in the hospitals and they love on these patients and they have a way of doing it that brings tears to these patients' faces. They have a way of going in nursing homes and seeing these beautiful elderly people that are in these nursing homes that just need to be touched because no one is visiting with them. They have a way of going to Mary Ellen's Hearth, Nellie Burge, a homeless shelter with children to just show them, we know you may not have nothing right now, but we can show you God's love. We also experience pressure from other people. And it can be pressure from Christians. It can be cr- pressure from non-Christians. People love to make comments and complaints. And the world's worst with negativity is we turn on our television or we turn on social media and you hear it from what? The news. It doesn't matter. And I always think about it to myself. I'm like, it doesn't matter what political party you're in. It doesn't matter what race you're in. There's always kinds of negativity. But if we just do what God calls us to do, Go and make disciples and share God's love and show his love, then all else will follow suit. But instead, we're nagging each other, complaining about things, making comments, and instead of making a solution, which is go make disciples and show God's love. Our job would be in a better place. Our government would be in a better place if they would just go and bow on their knees and take it before God before making a decision. A result of ignoring God's love is deep-seated emptiness that we try to fill our hearts with things. And each of us is a God-shaped voice, an empty space meant for our creator. We mistakenly think we can fill in that empty space with more things, more feel-good things like cars, clothes, phones, electronics. Let's turn on the media and let's see what else the media's got to say for us. Our hobbies. Let's spend more money on this or that to make me feel good. But instead, all we need to do is get on our knees and pray and say, Lord God, fill us up. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill us up and allow our cup to overflow. Another result of ignoring God's love is poor self-image, low self-esteem, and bad feelings about who we are. You just need to know who you are in Christ and that you are beautiful. God (coughs) created something beautiful in each one of you. Allow him to shape and mold you in who he created you to be. Accepting the love relationship God offers begin by choosing to be open to God and believing in him. Open yourself to the possibility. Live knowing that God is real. In the beginning, I shared with you about Calcutta, India, and Mother Teresa's orphanage. Mother Teresa opened her whole heart up to God and lived out her faith. She fed the hungry. She clothed the naked. And she gave all her money away as she was commanded by the Lord to help the needy. Believe God communicates. The Bible's whole message is that God speaks. Listen to other Christians, their experiences of God and struggles with faith. When I was in Haiti in December 2010, I really saw God through the people. They were faith 
with a tragic earthquake on January 12th that killed more than 200,000 people. I saw how the people had so much fear about what they went through, but several of them saw how God had delivered them out of collapsed buildings. Some of them shared how they were without food and water for three days, and we surrounded these people with our love and allowed Christ's love to shine through us as they shared their stories with us and shared many tears. Many believe that God's hands was on their lives as they were delivered out of that tragic situation. Think about 2011 tornadoes. Think about Wetumpka. This past January, the tornado. Think about Lee County. Recently, they're the tornado that hit them and the one in Titus. Alabama has experienced several deaths um, devastations and all we need to do is stand up as Christians reach out show God's love and communicate and listen to these people's stories believe and know God is still here with us he's just waiting to hear from us trust that God has a great purpose for your life Think about God's blessings in your life. God has started something good in you. What would your life be like if you were to accept God's love and go share his love? What would you be able to let go in your life? Say yes to the love relationship God offers. I had sponsored a child for nine years through Compassion International, and during my last year of sponsoring him, I got to go visit him in Peru for his senior year in April 2009. I was so blessed by the presence of the Peruvian people about how much love they offered us with a wel welcoming us and giving us hugs and kisses. I will never forget the day that I met my sponsor child and how he was so excited to see me. He showed me the letter that I wrote to him for nine years. Could you imagine nine years of letters I wrote this child? He was so excited to see me. He began speaking in English. He prepared himself a presentation in English because he only spoke Spanish to tell me how much he appreciated my sponsorship and he saw God's love through me. His mom told me there were days she didn't know how there would be food on the table, but every day God provided through the sponsorship. I could really see God's love and saw that he loved me enough that he planted a seed and used me as a seed in this child's life. We need to pray that God will give us compassion with the people that we work with daily. His letters that he showed me made me think about how God wrote us a love letter. Again, I'm reminding you, this is our love letter from God in this Bible. He loves us. God loves us so much that he took a nail, that he sent his son to die on the cross, and he took a nail in each hand. God invites us to say yes to the offer of a love relationship. What will your response be today? Remember, God loves you no matter what you are going through. Let us pray. Father God, sometimes I just don't know what to say because I'm just in awe of your love, Lord, and how much you love us. 
And sometimes, Lord, when life gets us down and we see things, Lord, and so much devastation, we wonder, but God, you're still there to show us your love. And God, we just thank you so much for people that surround us with your love and God, that you are always there showing us your presence and your love. And God, we just ask during this Lenten season that we will be continually reminded of your love and your presence. And God, we thank you for you sending your son to die on the cross for our sins and you loving us that much, Lord, that you wrote us this beautiful love letter in this Bible, Lord, and you just sharing it with us. And God, we just lift all this up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.